Hello, Fairbairn family. How are you? I hope you're well and staying in good spirits during these crazy and confusing times. My mask is thanks to Bob and Jackie Edwards, so thank you very much for that. I truly appreciate it. As difficult as things may seem, we have a lot to be thankful for. I'd like to thank all of you who've emailed and called and sent cards or took a moment in person around town to share some kind words of support. Those have been so tremendously helpful over the past few months. I truly appreciate it. The start of the school year for our students is only 26 days away. So let's recap a bit where we are and how we got here. On July 29th, the Cuyahoga County Board of Health recommended that all schools in their jurisdiction that uh, that schools begin the 2021 school year operating remotely due to the elevated health risk posed to students, staff, and family members. On August 5th, they updated their recommendation stating the following. It says, as we move forward and consider any future modifications to these recommendations, the factors under review by our agency will include, but are not limited to, positivity rates, a sustained decline in COVID-19 testing positivity rates below 5%. New case reports, a sustained decline in new cases over a one month period. The state public health advisory system, a risk rating of orange or level two or below over multiple weeks, which we must clearly indicate sustain, which must clearly indicate sustained improvement in the metrics as they relate specifically to our health jurisdiction. And fourth, COVID-19 testing capacity for children. Here's the sticky one. It states there is currently little to no testing available for those under the age of 18, which dramatically complicates our outbreak response in the school setting. The lack of testing limits our response to a symptom-based investigation response. On August 6th, we announced that we will begin the upcoming school year in remote mode for all students. And since then, many people have asked, how long will we be in remote mode? Up to this point in time, we've kept that relatively open, stating we would watch the county designation and virus spread. However, many parents have asked for a more definitive answer. Therefore, today we're sharing that the school district will stay in remote mode through the end of the first quarter of school, which is November 6th. Now, I'm gonna say something that you might find a little counterintuitive, so just hear me out. This afternoon, you may have heard in the governor's press briefing that Cuyahoga County has seen several weeks of decline in the number of positive cases, dropping down to 100 cases, 102 cases during the past week. This puts our county very close to potentially transitioning to the orange or level two stage of the Ohio Public Health Advisory System. Our current reimagined schools reentry plan indicates that we would return to all in on site mode once the county returns to orange level two. Here's the issue with that. The CCBH in their latest recommendation stated that schools should remain in a remote mode until positivity rates drop below 5%, right? Our county is still over 8%. More importantly, the CCBH stated that schools should remain in a remote mode until the testing capacity for children dramatically increases. Here's the biggest problem. They stated there's little, there is little to no testing available for those under the age of 18. That's gonna be a long-term problem for us. So again, based on this information and to help parents better plan, the school district will remain in remote mode through the end of the first quarter, November 6th. As we're approaching that date, we'll reassess and we'll be sure to communicate out with everyone. Now let's talk about what teaching and learning in the remote mode looks like. Whether you've signed up to be in our remote learning option or uh, if you have not, and you were planning on returning in person, uh, let's take a look at what that will uh, look like. Our fall 2020 remote learning will build on strengths established in spring of 2020 and refine features of our program. So last spring, we worked hard to continue learning, to help our students feel connected, and to help our parents stay informed. It was a crisis-based quick shift situation, and I'm incredibly proud of the work of our teachers, our support staff, and our administrators. We were in a great position as a district and a community to make this shift. It wasn't without challenges, and there were certainly things we've learned. 
This summer, we've had time to really plan on how to make things better. So this fall, we will strive to deliver a three to two ratio of teacher-led instruction, synchronous to student independent work, which will be asynchronous. We will provide high quality digital enabled and when safe and feasible, face-to-face -face instruction and feedback that meets individual student learning goals. We will emphasize rigorous and relevant pro project-based learning and performance assessment. We will make connections and build relationships that support students' social, emotional learning and well-being. And we will provide clear and consistent communications to families, including transparent learning goals and assessment practices. So let's talk about some of those key features of our remote learning. There continues to be some confusion between our remote learning option and when we open schools in a remote mode. So let me define. The, the remote learning option is for those who want to keep their students home and working in remote mode, even when we reopen the building to students, whenever that might be. For both of our remote learning option and our on-site option as we begin in the remote mode. We will continuously develop, improve, and deliver our district curriculum enhanced through the application of previous and new high quality digital resources. We'll strive to make connections and transitions between our remote learning option and our on-site mode as seamless as possible. Synchronous Google Meets will be used to help keep students connected. We'll establish, communicate, and maintain consistent daily and weekly schedules, including a three to two ratio of 60% teacher-led, or again, synchronous, to 40% student independent practice and reading and problem solving, writing, and things like that. We'll use Google Classroom K-12, Seesaw K-5, and Summit Learning 612 as our primary teaching and learning platforms, and PowerSchool for a reporting attendance and recording performance. Students will have access to a blend of digital and offline print and paper resources, which families may pick up from school during specific designated times throughout the duration of remote learning. Technology, both hardware and software, as well as troubleshooting will be provided throughout. Those who need troubleshooting with hardware and software can contact Fairview Tech support, and those who need assistance with connectivity can contact our Family and Community Engagement Coordinator, Ms. Carrie Sullivan. Traditional grading practices will continue to be in effect. Class procedures and assignments will communicate clear grading criteria. Baseline assessments will be given during the first two to three weeks of school to determine students' individual and cohort levels of mastery and skills in relation to the Ohio learning standards. We'll use assessments developed by our teachers with guidance from the Ohio Department of Education and NWEA MAP testing, which can be administered remotely. We'll also have ongoing formative and summative assessments throughout units and projects and communicated with parents via Seesaw, the Summit Platform, and Progress Book. So let's talk a little bit about attendance. Attendance will be taken visually whenever students are in synchronous or face-to-face -face even through Google Meet sessions. Teachers will monitor, record, and report students' engagement, assignment completion, progress, and achievement. Daily screen time will be purposeful, balanced between active and passive activities and opportunities to consume and create content. Brain breaks, lunch, and rest times will be built into the day. Families can expect approximately 120 minutes of daily screen in, in grades K through five and approximately 30 minutes per subject in grades six through 12. So let's talk a little bit about the expectations we need to set in order to make remote learning work. For families, you know, we'll use weekly teacher announcements to guide home support, ensure consistent and active student participation, and report excusable absences in the customary manner. Again, we need to take attendance every single day. For teachers, our teachers will maintain daily schedules, including office hours, and they will record and report attendance and participation. They will clearly articulate the weekly schedules, announcements, and expectations to families and students. Teachers will develop and deliver teacher-led synchronous learning activities that provide direct instruction, application, feedback, coaching, 
and reflection. Teachers will assist students and parents with navigating technology tools, and they will use instructional software to encourage collaboration and strive for that three to two ratio. Again, three parts of teacher-led synchronous instruction to two parts teacher, or I'm sorry, two parts student independent work that's asynchronous. And teachers will comply with all federal children's internet Pro protection acts. That's a given. Students. Students will attend daily as scheduled, checking in via Google Classroom, Seesaw, or the Summit Learning Platform. Students will be expected to actively engage in teacher-led activities and, as directed, in assigned independent activities. And they will seek teacher and or counselor assistance as needed. There have been a lot of questions about special education. So some important bullet points for you to know is that we will provide services to students to the extent practical while considering the safety, health, of our staff and students, as well as state and county recommendations. We are planning for in-person activities that target those areas of instruction and support that are most challenging or not possible to emulate in a remote fashion, specifically considering students demonstrating the most significant needs requiring significant adult assistance and requiring multiple layered related services and support. Each spe special education student will have a remote learning plan and no students will come into school buildings at level four purple. We also have some English language learners and the EL services will be provided to identify students at the level of support indicated by their English language proficiency as measured by the Ohio English language proficiency assistance. There's been some questions about our gifted programs. Gifted learners will continue to be identified per existing district protocol, no changes here. Gifted services will, as feasible, continue to include, at the elementary level, early entrance, differentiated instruction provided by classroom teachers and gifted intervention specialists, enrichment opportunities, cluster grouping in reading and math, pull-out services by gifted intervention specialists in reading and math, and at the middle and high school level, we will still accommodate single section acceleration, single subject acceleration, advanced placement and AP capstone opportunities, dual enrollment options, differentiated sections for core content courses, educational options, including credit flexibility and independent study and enrichment opportunities. So let's talk a little bit about our schedules. A lot of questions have been, will our students have schedules and what will they look like? And so you're going to see copies of our schedules. Let's start with kindergarten. So you'll see that we have a time schedule with slots for morning meetings and circle time and brain breaks and stretch time and transitions, reading and foundations, recess most certainly, and times for our children to unplug. You'll see that we'll have times for specials and then also times for math. We'll have more brain breaks, we'll have writing, we'll have reflections and instructions, and ultimately closing in for farewell at the end of the day, wrapping up. So these schedules may flex a little bit as we move forward, and uh, we will have these out and available to you, and we will follow them as we go. In grades one through five, at Gillis Elementary, we have a very similar schedule. We start at eight o'clock in the morning and go till 3.15. So we'll start with wake up and breakfast and all that fun stuff that you do with your children at home as they're getting ready for school. And at 8.45, we'll start with a morning class meeting. All group, morning and class announcements, focus for the day, school counselor check-ins, and many other things. We'll have our morning learning session number one, and then a brain break, and preferably a snack time. Morning learning session two will follow shortly thereafter, and then there'll be another break for lunch and some recess, some rest some other activities. We'll then move into the afternoon learning session one with a brain break between it and the afternoon learning session number two and those uh, lasting 60 and 30 minutes respectively and finish up about 2.45 with an afternoon class meeting where they'll wrap up the day and prep for the next. Looking at the daily remote schedule for grades six through eight, you'll see it looks a little different. So we have our nine period day, 
and on Monday, all students will meet with their teachers in synchronous mode via Google Meet at the scheduled times. So once again, our students will have to follow a, a pretty straightforward schedule. Then what they'll break into on Tuesday and Thursday, teachers will have a Scarlet group for synchronous uh, meeting with students and a gray group on Wednesday and Friday. And the gray group will work independently when the Scarlet group is online and vice versa. The high school schedule will look very similar. The, the only real difference that happens there is that the midday break, the lunch, is at a slightly different time. Now for both of these schedules, all instruction will be teacher-led, synchronous on Mondays. Teachers will split their class rosters into the scarlet and gray, as I mentioned, and students assigned to the scarlet groups will participate in teacher-led synchronous instruction on Tuesdays and Thursdays and self-directed asynchronous learning on Wednesdays and Fridays. Students assigned to the gray groups will participate in teacher-led synchronous instruction on Wednesdays and Fridays and self-directed asynchronous learning on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Assignment to the scarlet or gray groups may vary at teacher's discretion. If we run into a problem with that and you need to switch from one to the other, just contact your teacher. Attendance is expected and will be taken and recorded daily. So students, we heard that a lot from parents and a lot from teachers. We needed a good structure schedule and here it is. Now, I've thrown a lot of information at you today. I hope you're still with me. I can't tell you how much we appreciate your support and understanding as we navigate through these continuously changing circumstances. Keep the faith. We'll get through this together. So I'll close with a quote that one of our administrators shared with me. It truly puts so much of this in focus. Relationships before rigor. Grace before grades. Patience before programs. And love before lessons. We promise to do our best to keep these goals in the uh, forefront of our minds as we hold true to our district vision, learn differently, we've been doing a lot of that, care deeply, absolutely, and aspire to excellence, always. Stay safe, everyone.